Hi, welcome to episode 6. In this episode, we're going to be dealing with the problem of the EGR. So EGR stands for the Exhaust Gas Recirculation Valve. So I needed to sort the EGR out because the light is on on my dash and that's an MOT failure in the UK. And uh, so I thought I'd investigate and uh, this is what I found. Now it's fairly easy to get at on a carry. So um, I think you need a 12 millimeter spanner. And so I, I sit straight to it. It's a little tight at the back there, but uh, 12 more bolts appears to be holding with a gasket. Remove the whole lot. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. But that's what I've done. Look at that. As you can see, that is very clogged. Uh, well, let me see if I can get that camera in here. So the big shock is someone had put a plate covering up the holes. So no wonder the sensor was blocked. Now I hadn't heard of this, but apparently blocking the EGR valve off is a common practice. Some people do it for performance and uh, some people just do it when the EGR is playing up, they just block it off and don't worry about it. But nowadays you've got to have your light off for the MOT. So God knows how long it had been blocked for. Um, I mean, the van's what, about 19 years old. And as you can see, it was really coked up. And uh, so I started cleaning it out with some EGR cleaner and uh, some petrol and trying various solvents to clean it, to be honest. And well, it wasn't really getting very far. So the actual valve being blocked wasn't the only problem. The, uh, the actual engine was all coked up all the manifolds coked up and so I was spraying solvents in there and using pipe cleaners and etc to try and get it as clear and as clean as I could. Um, this is a pain in the ass, really. So I tried soaking the EGR with petrol with uh, some um, carb cleaner um, Tried various things really. Um, I actually found that the best one in the end was oven cleaner. But if, it, if I use oven cleaner, I only use it briefly and then I clean it with EGR cleaner afterwards because I believe that oven cleaner can attack aluminium. So I'd only left, had it on very briefly, but it was very good. And then I realized this pipe was probably also part of the problem so, as you can see, there's a pipe running there between the exhaust manifold. And uh, so I decided I was going to have to take that off and have a look at that. So I took off that pipe and uh, it was very cacked up in there. Loads of carbon. And so I've got the pipe cleaners out, and the EGR cleaner, brake cleaner. And I didn't use any, any oven cleaner on the block at all. As you can see, I managed to get this pipe cleaner between the two holes. That's the way it goes round. Um, and I know that red pipe cleaner looks a bit rude, but you know, <laughs> didn't do that intentionally. But that that is connected. That 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 does go right through there, and the other one goes straight in. And as you can see, they were really blocked before I started cleaning them. Now the metal pipe that I took off was completely blocked. The whole lot was blocked right the way through. And um, EGR cleaner and brake cleaner was doing nothing, as you can see. Uh, so I decided to have a go with the oven cleaner. And I've got to say, it must have took about three minutes, roughly five minutes, and it was completely clear. Uh, it was amazing. I give it a good swill afterwards so that there's none of the oven cleaner remaining, but. That is definitely the thing to shift it. 
and as you can see I've got a pipe cleaner to go right the way through so I, I now know that's clear which is a, a relief. So I've done a lot of cleaning and I got the EGR pretty spotless. Um, still couldn't understand why it wasn't working but I got the EGR spotless. I got into the holes the best I could. I had a, a drill with um, a pipe cleaner on it into the holes and um, well I'm you know starting to get a bit desperate now in that the light kept coming on even though I'd done a lot of cleaning. So I refitted uh, the EGR and took it off again, cleaned it, refitted it, cleaned it and so on and so on a number of times and I still couldn't get the light to go off. So I come to the conclusion that I'd need to buy a new EGR. Now when I'd looked, they're really expensive, they're about £300. So what I did was I searched the part number and I found other Suzuki vehicles that use it and I ended up buying it for about £30. So that's a hell of a saving, really. And uh, I was very pleased with myself. Um, I waited a couple of weeks, the part came, I fitted it, and uh, <laughs> and the light's still on. And so I decided to change the oxygen sensor on the exhaust, because most of this trouble seemed to start when I fitted the exhaust. So as you can see, I'm now under the car. This is the oxygen sensor that I um, fitted up when I changed the exhaust and I proceeded to take it out. So I took it out, it looks a bit threaded to me, but uh, other than that, I couldn't see anything wrong with it. Um, so I'd bought another one online, and again, the original one was about £300, and again, I searched for a, a pattern part, which was about £30. Uh, I fitted that, I was quite pleased with myself, tried it, and the light still come on and not only did the light come on but i lost the one code that was that it was reading and gained a new one so it was originally reading 136 and 400 uh, now it's reading 141 and 400 so bear in mind i've changed the oxygen sensor and the egr and it's still playing up so I'll come back to this in a later video when I've sussed out what's wrong. Wish me luck.